What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome back to week four of the UBL. And yeah, we're going against Asher Moore, and uh, I'm going to screw up his name, but uh, I think the Akapalkia, really sorry if I'm butchering that, Thunders. Um, you know, you study English for what is that now? I believe over 20 years, and there's still combinations of words that just mmm, so tough, <laughs> so so tough. Uh, but yeah, his team is as follows: Yoroshi, Tabufini, Salomon, Sarah Aura, Crobat, Kirim, Fortress, Scraft Teams, Mages, Mudstale, and the Mega Kangaskhan. Though without the seismic toss, but still the double hitting variant. Still nasty, still tough. It's there. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> and I'll be honest here. This is a team that, while it isn't the toughest on paper, uh, he still dictates the speeds here because they do have two threats that are faster than my fastest threats. So both Crowbad and Sarah Aura are standing out there as Pokemon that will be very effective towards me. Um, the way I see it, the match I'm going to fend off against because I... I really, really need to do something like this because of I can't dictate the speeds here myself. Uh, which Pokemon I'm gonna be forced to be fending off against that are going to be effective? And I definitely believe Fortress and um, Tapufini are my number one threats because those two do help each other quite well to keep each other kind of safe from the battle. And only one Pokemon to fend off with that fairly, fairly well, and that is actually Yorashi. Which also deals very well with, uh, or I mean, Salasal, but I was gonna say another Pokemon effective for me is Yurashi. So Salasal do cover that spot quite nicely. It just needs to watch out for the Sarah Aura and Crobat, which are faster. Um, so I'm gonna go over my team and, of course, the thought process I had. Um, I actually just made this team yesterday night, and I really, really, really hope that it stands out. I don't believe I did take too much time going over this team, I had a thought process of which four that was gonna make it, they are on point. It's the other two that are kind of up there, I had other options but decided against them also, but they might as well be just as effective. Um, so first and foremost, the one that's absolutely gonna make it here is the Thunderous. Thunderous this time around is a modest variant because I really don't need to outspeed anything. I'm able to outspeed the base 100 in Yurashi, I do take Quite a big risk here of... No, I'm not fast with Yurashi, I mean Kyurem. I don't care about Yurashi that much, depending on the set. But of course, I'm slower than Miss Mages, which also is a possible threat. But yeah, we just outspeed Kyurem, and... Um, we are quite standard, actually. Would you have some small investment in HP? It's not going to matter to get with defense and special defense. It's, it's not going to help anything. It's just that I don't need more speed to invest that in some kind of bulk... And I'd definitely say some kind of bulk. Um, the, the main focus here is that we are very, very, very specially offensive. That's the only thing that matters. Um, attacks we're going to go with are Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, Focus Blast, and Agility. Agility, because it is agility. Like, if I outspeed everything on the team, I do with that with agility. I still don't need to be... Or I don't want to be less speedy than, let's say, the likes of Kyurem. Uh, I do want to fret that out no matter what. Uh, we have a C Focus Blast, mainly to actually hit Sarah Aura for at least 80% of damage, which is a very, very good thing to do, because other than that, Sarah Aura is, by theory, walling Thunderous quite well. Uh, and I can't spam Thunderbolts over I like. Uh, the thing is that if that Pokemon is gone, Sarah Aura, then I'm very free to spam um, Thunderbolts. The only thing or Pokemon that stand up against that is Mudstail, which is o code by Grass Knot. Barring that it is not an Assault Vest, which I feel is unlikely because it probably needs rocks and it's unfortunate to make Yurashi the rocker um, since Mudsdale are much suitable, more suitable for that I would say and Yurashi just is a very offensive effective threat towards me anyway um, so yeah, Thunder is nothing to it it's it's important for the game, it could very well sweep but it's, yeah, wouldn't say it's um, it's a key threat but it's able to do the job I wanted to, I hope um, the next program coming up is Tangrowth, and it's a rather standard Tangrowth, I would say. Uh, we have a relaxed nature, basically because we do use both special and physical moves and are regenerating. Uh, Stack-wise, we have a lot of defense investment involved here. Uh, this is mainly to be forced to take a hit from Crobat. Um, if it's going to go for Brave Bird, I will be very likely to take that quite nicely and able to retaliate and hopefully kill. Same thing here uh, when it comes to uh, Salamence. 
unless it's a C fly set, I should be able to soak damage quite well against that and able to kill it in return. We have a small investment in special attack just to ensure that we do KO with Hidden Power Ice versus Salamence and do significant amount of damage towards Crobat. And also the physical bulk here is also for Sarah Aura. I do believe Sarah Aura is struggling versus Tangrowth. And um, yeah, it's a very safe switching. I do believe Tangrowth is going to be soaking damage as always. Um, it's a very sackable mod depending on what I'm going up against. And uh, it also deals quite well with the Feeny, which could have Nature's Madness. Um, that's something that I wouldn't say is an issue, but I need to watch out for it. Uh, because, we, like I said, we don't have a special defense investment besides Assault Vest, so... Ice Cream is gonna sting afterwards, so it's whether I stay or not, if that's the combination. <sighs> Attacks here, very, very easy to go with. Giga Drain, Hidden Power, Ice, Focus Blast, and Knock Off. Um, I do believe Focus Blast is mainly for Kangaskhan, which also kind of struggle against this set. Uh, but overall, this is a very, very fat Tangrowth. I feel like I'm bringing a fat tanker of any time or every time, but it's just because it is that effective. It is that nice to work out with. So I'm, yeah, I'm liking it. I, I actually quite do. Uh, then we have the four remaining Pokemon. I'm gonna talk about the one that absolutely makes it. Salasol. First time I'm bringing it. I've been very much against bringing Salasol. I think it's a very tough mod to implement in a team, and it actually is. Uh, because it just has so many big issues with weaknesses, but if it is speedier and hits harder, then it's going to be a very effective threat. Um, I was considering a Scarf set to be able to deal with Crobat and Sarah Aura. I do believe a Pokemon that deals with them anyway, and our switches towards that. Um, maybe Crobat is quite risky, could have Steel Wings, as you guys see, I am having a Deinchi. Um But, I decided to go for a modest set, Specs, Able to Outspeed, Yurashi, at base 100. Um, besides that, it's a this Pokemon is supposed to just force the switches and nuke things. Fire Blast and Sludge Wave are just a perfect combination of the whole matchup, and then we carry Eden Power Ice for things. I, I think it's just for. I actually considered Dragon Pulse at first, but since it was so specific to Salamence, I might as well make it Eden Power Ice and do hit a broader array of Pokemon instead. Uh, the thing is, there a modest specs. Sludge Wave, do Oko, Tapu Fini. Um, I'm, I'm gonna leave with this Pokemon. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like I said, their Fortress and Fini are going to be Pokemon that go into be in this game. They're both gonna be quite effective leads versus me, so I intend to nuke some of them. And worst case scenario, we are looking at me going for Fire Blast uh, against Fortress. He's switching Fini. Fini is still gonna take roughly 20 to 30 percent of damage. That's a lot of damage anyway. And Tiger is gonna be a fair switch in there. Um, Besides that, I have actually no plan for this Pokemon. I really, really just want to make sure that my opponent here does not want to stay in, switching something in that could soak damage just to see it really not be able to. Uh, ideal situation is something like he predicted me to go for a Sludge Wave, it goes to Crobat, I go for Fire Blast, Oko, Crobat. Uh, says that, like I said, I can't win the speed tier. At least I can damage the speed tier as just really, really make sure that he can't switch in too much versus this set. Um, I guess you should mention the attacks. And uh, there's Sludge Wave, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, just to be safe, and Hidden Power Eyes. So yeah, nothing to it. The three remaining Pokemon are quite up there. Um, Dianchi was definitely going to make it no matter what. It was which set it was going to bring. And well, we're taking the same route as we did previous week. We are going to have a Shukaberry variant of a quiet Trick Room Dianchi. Um... The thing is here, I was really looking forward to we're going to make Greninja possible here or anything like that, but realize as I can't win the speed here, I might as well be forcing it to be myself quite slow. Um, Salas and Thunderous do dominate my speed here anyway and do force some kind of switches. And the thing that they don't doubt speed, they can actually win them in Trick Room. So I realized somewhere down the line that I'm not going to go for Trick Room unless it's needed to, but it's an aspect. Um, Dayenshi is still not invested in such a way that it's slower than Mudstail because it's quite risky. Mudstail is going to be very, very threatening. Um, Stat-wise, we do have just bulk overall. <laughs> and we have Power Jam, Moonblast. Hidden Power, I do believe Ice. Was it Fire? It was Fire for Fretress and then Trick Room. Um, it's nothing to it. And Mesprit kind of follows that same way. You have a Colbert Bird this time around in case Scraft is making it. 
We have a combination of Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, because they do hit the whole team or, super, or at least neutral, but the most of them do, do take super effective damage towards the set. We have Stealth Rocks and Trick Room. Now, I had an idea of using this very end with an Assaultist. I uh, decided against that, even though Dazzling Gleam would be nice, uh, just to Oko Scrafty. The thing is, it's so unlikely that Scrafty makes it, that I feel like I can deal with it with my last Pokemon bring. Stat-wise, a lot of bulk. The bulk, it's, it's all about the bulk. It's all about setting the Trick Room going, really. Take a hit and then do damage and fall. Mesprit is not an important aspect for this Wife of Bella, but it's going to be annoying for my opponent to deal with. And we are oh, bold nature, whatever. Um, and then the last Pokemon, yet again, the Sheer Force Life Orb. Coquiller. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Demon. The Beast. Um, this is a Pokemon that's very well sweep his team uh, on the Trick Room. There's really no switchings that does well versus this. Um, Feeny can survive a Thunder Punch, which is unfortunate. But. Um, I'm pretty sure the combination of Fire Blast and a Thunder Punch do KO it, um, depending on which set he's gonna bring. Stat wise, yeah, we are offensive. We do have HP, but we are offensive. Uh, attacks here, I actually not decided to have Ice Punch here, which makes Mudstail a threat, but maybe not as much as one would think, because Drain Punch is a thing and I have switchings for it. Basically, if Mudstail makes it, I need to make sure that Mesprit and Tangerov are fairly healthy this stat Pokemon is out because stamina is just that thing. The thing is here, a combination of Drain Punch and Ice Punch is not doing more than 70% and I will risk taking a lot of damage in return and while I will ensure a KO with an Ice Punch I feel it's a very high risk. Um, and of course because we're not invested in such a way that we are slower in Trick Room than Mudsail, it's, we just aren't. Um, I'd rather be faster at it than try to take it down, than uh, risking it. Uh, but besides that, I mean, we have the combination of Drain Punch, Rock Slide, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch. And they're there for obvious reasons. Um, if you're looking upon the team itself... Oh, that's the wrong... Graph Boar. <laughs> um, the combination itself really does allow it to hit hit the team quite well. Yurashi is Okoba Fire Punch, Tabafini is almost Okoba Thunder Punch. Salamence is almost Oko by Rock Slide. Sarah Aura is almost Oko by Drain Punch. I can just go over. Basically, the only Pokemon that could survive hit Sarah Mudsdale uh, that I think are a threat to do force it out. Besides, everybody else is just tanking. They're, they're not taking on Conkeldur. And I feel it's really weird bringing Conkeldur like this, but it's really a very effective threat. And we're going to treat it as such. Um, so, Pokemon I think he's going to bring to the battle. Absolutely, Yurashi. Yurashi, Tapu Fini, Sarah Aura, Crobat, and Fretress. I feel those five make sense here. And then it's up in the air, you know. Uh, I think Mudsteels are very tough for me to deal with. I don't believe Cure and Black are that effective. Mere Kangaskhan. Mm. I can see it makes it, but it would be... Like, I think my, I have a defensive promise to my team that... Uh, isn't making it as effective as it can be. Though the Power Punch variant is annoying. Uh, Thunderous and of course Sliasla outspeeds it and are able to deal with it quite properly. And of course I have to watch out for Sucker Punch and whatnot. But besides that, yeah, those are the five that are definitely going to make it. The other ones are just as good of a guess as uh, yours are, if you're guessing out there in the World Wide Web. <laughs> I'm being dumb. Anyway, um, that's my team I'm going with. I hope you guys like this and we're going to have a transition to the battle itself. Ooh. I'm not very good at that part, am I? So before going into this game, if anything, I do want to encourage you guys, of course, check out Ashamore's side of this battle. And, you know, his content overall, after all said and done, he's a very, very good analytic player. I really like watching his uh, his way of thinking and how he does his plays. And he does narrate that quite well. Very, very progressive. And uh, yes, yeah, he's a very wonderful guy to watch, if anything. So with, of course, that said, the matchup. We get the matchup. We pretty much... In anticipated though with one change and that is going to be the Kangaskhan is there over Mudsail that does mean that the Thunder's effectiveness are still as good but not as good because we did carry Grassnut for Mudsail alone and it looks to be a move that won't be used at all for this matchup at all and definitely it could have encouraged to get of course Dark Pulse which would be tremendously against Hirashi but besides that we are not necessarily that bold for this matchup which we will mean 
that uh, we're gonna try to play a rather fast game here, at least as fast as I can with a, I would say, a slower team. The team here he brings is clearly faster, but I'm just gonna try to nuke everything. I had my intention to start with Salasul, that's still gonna be my first plan, and we'll take it from there. Uh, I, of course, am pretty sure he's gonna lead off with either Crobat, Fretres, or Fini. But for Estres makes the most sense, and if you're gonna try to prevent service sturdy, he's gonna switch in Tabafini, and we can pressure it from there. Um, so that's really all my game plan is. Like everything from there, I'm gonna take it from there. So with that said, of course, let's go into the match. So from the get-go here, we're gonna get a very massive turn because we of course start with Orchid to Slassel, and my opponent's gonna start off with Fini. Well, the thing is here, I'm gonna go directly for a sludge way, I don't care if Fortresses comes in and deals with me, but my opponent do stay in, and we actually knock out the type of Fini turn one. And, and that's huge, like that's, that means that we can start spamming Fire Blast, Kite, Effortlessly, and my opponent of course goes to his Fortress, which I don't care if it sets up rocks, while I do am weak to rocks, I have no intention of staying for this game for the long game. So I switch in my Conkelder. Um I'm gonna go for the easy play here, which is actually gonna go for a Drain Punch just to get it down to Sturdy. I know he potentially can go for Resigal of Spikes, but it actually goes for Toxic. I think he forgot about the Misty Terrain, and we do knock it down to Sturdy. I'm gonna, after here, switch out to my Tangrel, mainly because I thought it was gonna explode. I don't want any Resigal damage onto my Conkelder, at least not yet. It's super effective against this whole team anyway, and yeah, my opponent actually just go directly for Nightquake. So. That's good. It's not gonna do anything to Tangrove. I mean, it barely moved the HU ball, which was quite nice. And uh, my opponent is gonna decide to score sack it. It's like it's not like it's gonna risk getting uh what do you say? The crowbar to get residual damage onto it. So what is worth, we're still very early 6-4. And uh, my opponent here is gonna send a crowbat, it makes sense. I expect to go for U-turn or Brave Birds. I'm staying in go for a knockoff just to scout item. He actually goes for Air Slash and he does so much damage that I was sure this was a Spex Crobat, but I, for the life of me, don't find that out because I do get flinched, which means the game kind of pushes forward. Um, now, he's going to predict my switch out as I actually switch into my Dianchi. It predicted that quite nicely as I'm forced to switch out here. It's... Well, let's just say it as it is, it's not a particularly good spot to be in, as I'm going to send in Tangrove again, potentially snacking it actually, as my opponent goes for Thunder Wave, predicting most likely my Salasul to come in, which is good. Hiroshi, depending on the set, can't necessarily knock me out from this range, and I can easily go for knockoff. I expected him to potentially be an um, Iron Head combination of Thunder Wave. Um, so we do get the knockoff on the Crobat, what's even better is that we do knock out the Expert Belt, it does lower its viability somewhat, as I'm gonna actually now from here send in Silmeria again, being very predictable, I guess. As he's gonna hit him power, I was like, oh shit, don't be hidden power, steel or ground. And it's most likely ice, and that's awesome, because that means that all of a sudden we actually get the chance to set up a, a trick room from here. And uh, that's, that's a big deal. Uh, while the Yenji is not effective in trick room, I know one guy that is. And that is Kongelder, so we're pressuring quite hard here from the get-go as we get a, one of those really tough lead way. My opponent has not really any strong defensive types left to soak damage. Fini was probably the one representing the best of that. And with that gone, Kangaskhan, while being somewhat bulky, is not nearly as bulky as my opponent can go for our blast. Most likely predicting, of course, the Tangrove, but no, I'm not gonna do that. Or no, we could potentially get a, a guess, a burn on me. Now, I definitely felt his best play was to go into his Crobat, so I went directly for Rock Slide. Um, because I know the only way I was going to win here was somewhere somewhere down the line to solve the Trick Room turns, and I definitely think that was the right play, if anything. So, you know, I was happy with that. Uh, as Hiroshi comes in, and I think my opponent just kind of, I'll be honest, gave up here. And I get that. You know, you don't often see a Congeller one in KOing. Uh, Yurashi. I do score a crit here, I am pretty sure that doesn't matter because of life orb and sheer force combination. So my opponent here goes to double tap, double tap, do not have fake out, and I do outspeed it in terrain, or in trick room. We're gonna knock that out, so his remaining Pokemon is Yurashi, and while of course the trick room is a do now, there is really nothing a Aura can do to a rather bulky offensive, um, well, Conkelder, so 
yeah, we do get a really, I would say, nasty win here. And I really mean that it is nasty. Because I definitely feel my opponent did the wrong play turn 1. That's not going to go away. Losing Feeny really, really opened up a pretty large door for me of being very offensively active. And um, he just didn't recover from that. And I'm, I'll be honest and say that most people wouldn't. Uh, I think my opponent did some good play there with Crobat against my Dianchi and do the double switch against Hiroshi. But even at that point, he couldn't necessarily stop the six remaining Pokemon I had. And of course, with Trick Remind, it really was whether or not Dainzi or Mesprit or Mesprit was going to set that off. And uh, Congeller just from that point onward really wasn't fretted about anything during Trick Room. And we win this game 6-0 and we win it because, well, because of that very big risk in the beginning. So, before I even go to talk about the game itself, I do, like I said before, encourage you guys to check out Ashen's side of this battle. Not because it will be a different result or not, but I definitely think his explanations for the situations are much more broader than I can provide myself. We did talk a little bit afterwards and he regretted to take that risk first turn and I absolutely agree that that was... It was a, such a surprise in play. Uh, I absolutely attacked what was in front of me, knowing that Red Red was gonna possibly come in, set up rocks, I'll get a very easy lead way to my Congelder and I'll take it from there. Um, that was my plan. That that really was my plan. And uh, yeah, I think that play really, really just decided the game because all of a sudden Feeny is gone. That means Salasal isn't you can use spam Fire Blast. That's that's a very big issue. And consider that Hiroshi was now. Uh, Thunder Wave varying with most likely Iron Head, yeah, that 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 Yurashi would not win versus Salasal either. So it really wasn't any switching the left for Salasal, which I haven't deemed as a threat ever due to these bulky war attacks we are around. They clearly dealt with this specific war type of anything. And of course Conkelder and Thunderous was looking stronger than ever from that. More Conkelder that matters. But yeah, besides that, um I don't think this represent what Ashen is usually playing. Um, I mean, I checked out a few of his games just to get a feeling how he plays the game itself. He's a very, very strategized player, does very selective moves from turn to turn. And I think this play was so out of his character, and I think it really did down spiral from there. And all I can say is he most likely had a really bad day. Um, I have those myself, but I think none of the plays I make are doing much sense and of course the game represents just that. So I can only hope because Ashen is a much stronger player than this and um, <clears throat> while I get a strong 6-0 here I feel it's unjust because I feel I, I faced a player that wasn't playing his very best uh, or at least he didn't get the right mindset for being played or played that very as good as he could and trying to say the right things here. I actually think I'm I, I don't deserve that 6-0. I don't believe the game should have looked like this. Uh, because he doesn't get to showcase anything about his set or what had he planned. I barely get to do that myself. Besides Taiwan, which for the right things, yeah, it, it worked. But for me, I, I don't care if I win or lose a game. I want to have the showcase. I want the player to get, you know, shift momentum, showcase what you got. And I win or lose 1-2-0. or two Um... For me, that's that's what a league should look like, and I think, uh, or I believe, that is something that Ashen most likely think himself. I think most players here don't necessarily care of winning or losing, but this is just one of those things. Like it looks bad for wrong reasons, and it's because of that very first call in the beginning of the game, and that dictated the rest of it. Because all of a sudden, like I said, the shakes were gone for certain Pokémon of mine, and it just was very tough for Ashen to actually recover from that. So, that's three minutes of me trying to explain what I thought about the game itself. Um, like I said here, I want to say GG to Ashen, but at the same time, I know he doesn't feel the same way. And I won't be honest and say that I probably don't do that either. I think I deserve a better game against him, and I'm pretty sure he thinks he he wanted a better game than he provided. Um, and it's not to be disrespectful, it's because I know how good he is, and this is not representing that. And... Um, I don't know, it's unfortunate. Um, I'll hope that the game itself that he records and showcase explains what happened. Because, like I said here, I watch his stuff, I know he's good. And um, hopefully his next upcoming games will showcase that more. Um, I'm pretty sure they will actually. I think 
I think these kind of games makes you stronger, it makes you get a grudge. That means we can't win next time we face each other. That's fine. I think. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you for of course watching as always. Like I said, check out Ashen's side of battle, I think I said it over the fourth time now. Figure that out. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you for watching, thank you for doing so. And I'll see you next week, where we're going up against the Slovenian Slowbros. Finally, an opponent in Europe again. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.